Welcome to our lesson about using blocks. Let's start by creating a new part. And let's insert a sketch. It'll be on the XZ plane. Right click, new sketch. I'll take a top view. And let's create some geometry here. Rectangle tool. I'll drop one about here. And another over here. Line tool. For construction. Place my first line here. Right click, restart. And my second line here. Right click and done. Now I'm going to create a block. Let's go to the layout panel and click on create block. First we select the geometry that we want to include in our block. Block name, let's leave as default block one. Now we can specify an insertion point if needed. By default, the insertion point is the center point of the geometry. We can check visibility to see the insertion point in the graphic area. Let's click OK. And let's create a second block now. We'll select the second entity. I'll accept the default name, block 2. And let's click OK. In the browser, we've now got an extra folder containing block 1 and block 2. Let's expand the branch for sketch 1 as well. We can see them under here. You may be wondering what exactly is a block. A block is basically an array of geometric elements combined together in a single entity. If I try to resize a block of geometry, I can't. The geometry moves as a single entity. However, we are able to edit blocks. Just double click on the block. And now we're in block editing mode. Now we can resize the geometry. And when we're finished, let's click Finish Edit Block. Let's apply some constraints now. A fix constraint here, a vertical constraint here, and a coincident constraint between these two points. Right click and done. Sometimes Inventor will add extra constraints. Let's see about this. If I try to drag my block, nothing happens. Let's press F8. This is the Show All Relations shortcut. Notice I've got some perpendicular or normal constraints that were inferred. Right click and delete. Here's a second Normal 2 constraint. Let's right click and delete that as well. And now let's press F9, the shortcut to hide all constraints. Notice the block has changed color from dark blue to purple. That's a sign that it's no longer fully constrained. We're able to move it as well. Let's click Finish Sketch. Now I'm going to create an assembly. Let's go to the Manage tab. Make Components. Inventor prompts us to save the layout part first. Let's click Yes. We'll save it in the folder for Lesson 28, and let's call it Layout. Click Save. Here I'm going to select Block 1 and Block 2. We can specify the assembly name as well as the location and template type. Let's click Next. Here we've got the names of the selected blocks, their corresponding component file names, the template upon which they were based, the bill of material structure, and the file path. Let's select block 1, modify the template. For example, let's change the template file to standard in millimeters. OK. And now we're using the metric standard part template for one part and the imperial part template for the second block. Let's click OK. And take a home view. Here is our part. Let's right click on block 2 and select grounded. And now let's edit the part. Double click on block 2. Activate the extrude command. The depth is fine. Click OK. Let's make the sketch visible now. Right click on sketch 1 and select visibility. And let's return to our assembly. Let's edit block 1 now. Extrude command. Notice now that our units are displayed in millimeters. 10 millimeters is fine. Let's click OK. Let's return to the assembly. And let's make Sketch 1 visible as well. Right click, select Visibility. 
Now we can see how our assembly works. Let's return to the layout part document. Double click on Sketch 1. And let's bring in a second instance of Block 1 simply by dragging it from the tree right into the graphic area. As you see, a second instance of Block 1 now appears under Sketch 1. Let's apply some constraints. Coincident constraint between this point and this point. Right click and done. Let's finish the sketch now and convert the second instance of the block into a part. Make component. We'll select the block from the tree. Click Next. And let's click OK. And as you see, instead of creating a totally new part, we were able to create a second instance of block one. Let's make some modifications to extrusion one. Let's change it to 15 millimeters. OK. And once again, let's return to the layout document. Let's change the shape of the block a little bit. To edit a block, just double click on it. Make your adjustments, and when you're finished, click Finish Edit Block. Let's return to the assembly now. Update. And as you see, Block 1 is updated here as well. This concludes our first lesson about working with blocks. We'll be working with blocks frequently during our next three lessons on the external Geneva mechanism.